Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel that it may reach to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cuando llegó el día de Pentecostés, estaban todos unánimos juntos. Y de repente vino del cielo un estruendo como de un viento recio que soplaba, el cual llenó todas las casas donde estaban sentados. 
y se les aparecieron lenguas repartidas como de fuego asentándose sobre cada uno de ellos. Y fueron todos llenos del Espíritu Santo. Comenzaron a hablar en otras lenguas según el Espíritu les daba que hablase. Moraban entonces en Jerusalén judíos, varones piadosos de todas las naciones bajo del cielo. Y hecho este estruendo, se juntó la multitud y estaban confusos, porque cada uno se le oía hablar en, en su propia lengua. Y estaban atónitos y maravillados, diciendo, mirad, ¿no son galileos todos estos que hablan? Como pues lo oímos nosotros hablar, cada uno en nuestra lengua en la que hemos nacido. Partos, Medos, Elaminitas y los que hablamos en Mesopotamia, en Judea, en Capadocia, en el Ponto y en Asia, en Frigia y en Pantilia, en Egipto y en las regiones de África más allá de Sirene, y romanos aquí residentes, tanto judíos como prosélitos. Cretenses y árabes, les oímos hablar en nuestras lenguas las maravillas de Dios. Y estaban todos atónitos y perplejos, diciendo unos al otro, ¿Qué quiere decir esto? Más otros burlándose decían, están llenos de mosto. Entonces Pedro, poniéndose en pie con las once, alzó la voz y habló diciendo, varones judíos y todos los que habitáis en Jerusalén, esto os sean no, uh, notorios y oír mis palabras, porque esto no es tan ebrios como vosotros suponéis, puesto que en la hora tercera del día, más esto es el dicho por el profeta Joel. Y en los posteriores días, dice Dios, derramaré de mi espíritu sobre toda la carne, y vuestros hijos y vuestras hijas profes, profesarán, vuestros jóvenes verán visiones y nuestros ancianos soñarán sueños. Y de cierto sobre mis siervos y sobre mis siervas en aquellos días derramaré de mi espíritu y profesarán y daré prodigios arriba y en el cielo y señales abajo y en la tierra sangre y fuego y vapor de humo el sol se convertirá en tinieblas y la luna en sangre antes que venga el día del Señor, grande y manifiesto. Y todo aquel que invocarme el nombre del Señor será salvo. La palabra del Señor.
Lecture de la lettre de Paul aux Corinthiens C'est pourquoi je veux que vous en soyez bien convaincus. Aucun homme guidé par l'Esprit de Dieu ne peut dire « Maudit soit Jésus » et personne ne peut déclarer Jésus à le Seigneur s'il n'est pas guidé par le Saint-Esprit. Il y a diverses sortes de dons spirituels mais c'est le même esprit qui les accorde. Il y a diverses façons de servir, mais c'est le même Seigneur que l'on serve. Il y a diverses activités, mais c'est le même Dieu que les produit toutes en tous. En chacun, l'Esprit Saint se manifeste par un don pour le bien de tous. L'Esprit donne à l'un de parler selon la sagesse et à un autre, le même Esprit donne de parler selon la connaissance. Ce seul et même Esprit donne à l'un la foi et à un autre le pouvoir de guérir les malades. L'Esprit accorde à l'un le pouvoir d'accomplir des miracles et à un autre le don de transmettre ses messages reçus de Dieu. À un autre encore, la capacité de distinguer les faux esprits du véritable esprit. À l'un, il donne la possibilité de parler en des langues inconnues, et à un autre, la possibilité d'interpréter ces langues. C'est le seul et même esprit qui produit tout cela. Il accorde à chacun un don différent comme il le veut. En effet, le Christ est comme un seul corps qui possède plusieurs parties. Ce corps reste un, bien qu'il se compose de différentes parties. Et nous tous, les juifs ou les non-juifs, les esclaves ou les hommes ou libres, nous avons été baptisés pour former un seul corps par le même Saint-Esprit. Et nous avons tous eu à boire de ce seul Esprit. Parole du Seigneur. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The word of the Lord. To God. Greetings, saints of God, on this blessed feast of Pentecost. The day we celebrate the outpouring of the promised gift of the Holy Spirit on fearful disciples some 2,000 years ago, empowering them to go and preach the good news of the risen Savior. We are reminded that the Holy Spirit is still available to us to sustain and to guide us on our earthly pilgrimage, especially during these troubled times of the global pandemic, coupled with the rising tide of racial and economic distress in our nation. Today, our diocesan bishop, the right Reverend Lawrence Provenzano, has made his Pentecost sermon available to the entire diocese. So we, along with many of our friends listening to our live streaming in distant places, can reflect and discern the nudging of the Spirit during these critical times that we are living in. Thank you, Bishop Provenzano, for gracing us with your presence today. We welcome you to St. David's. Throughout my ordained ministry, I have loathed any attempt by preachers using themselves as an example in a sermon. Today, I will do that loathsome thing because my prayer and preparation for preaching today leave me little choice. And so I beg your indulgence. In the mid-1970s, I was a member of a cloistered religious community. I lived in Eremo Beato Bernardo, the hermitage of Blessed Bernard. The monastery, was named for the local Capuchin Franciscan friar who lived in the town in the hills in Corleone, Sicily, who had been named by the church as Blessed. I had entered the community to live a monastic expression of the Franciscan rule, to escape the world in that classic intent of monastic life, fuga mundi to flee the world. I was convinced of a religious vocation and sought as a very young man to escape the distractions, curiosity, and the work of the world outside the walls of the monastery. In an effort to learn, to pray, to study, to have union with God. I lived that cloistered life with 30 other brothers for nearly two and a half years. 
until one warm, sunny, late April day when I experienced a personal but very real Pentecost event. It was siesta time, and as I often did not sleep at midday, I would climb up on the inside wall of the monastery and look out over the small city of Corleone. This day, in the stillness of a warm afternoon, I eavesdropped on a conversation on the street below the wall. A father washing his car, talking, actually negotiating with his teenage children about the use of their money, priorities of their family life, and the need of the children to live within the family budget. That was a Pentecost moment for me. Everything changed that afternoon and in the days that followed. The disciples were locked away for fear of the world following the events of Good Friday and the days that followed. They were bewildered scared, and not knowing what to do next. The risen Christ comes and stands in their midst and says, Peace be with you. And as we have learned and heard from the Acts of the Apostles, having been encouraged by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they emerged from that locked room, preaching in various tongues, and giving witness to the reality of the resurrection. Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the church. It may be an oversimplification, but actually describes that movement of the Holy Spirit that released the disciples and empowered them to reveal the redemption of all of humanity found in the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we have lived through the past 12 weeks of quarantine and isolation for fear of the illness associated with COVID-19, the pandemic, each of us, I am certain, have longed for a return to what we believe to be normal. But we have discovered, we have discovered, haven't we, that our way of being, the craziness of our existence, the way in which we carried on in life was not normal at all. We have learned some significant lessons about our place in life, the importance of the people around us each day that we often take for granted, the choices we make, the assumptions we carry, the evaluation of what we believe is essential. We all now understand that what we imagined about the priorities of our common life might have been a little too self-serving and a little too exclusionary to actually be called common life. It appears that social distancing and a bit of isolation has taught us each how to appreciate the gift and genuine need of each other in reality. We are relearning the holiness of the human family. We are having a Pentecost event as a people anew. As members of the church, the people of God, we know well that the celebrations of the liturgical calendar are never ever meant to be solely occasions to recall a past historical or biblical event. The incarnational theology that forms our liturgical and sacramental life dictates that our celebrations encompass the real time experience of the people of God. 
today, this celebration of Pentecost provides us the opportunity to be renewed by God's Holy Spirit. Not in wishful thinking, not in a delusion of returning to some misconceived normalcy, but in holy expectation of God acting in our time to move the church into the moments of terror and fear so many of us are experiencing and transforming this experience into a time of deep and abiding peace that God brings to us, breathes on us, and creates in us to move out beyond the walled-in reality to a transformed movement of sharing Jesus' love and compassion with a hurting and confused world. The Pentecost event, as recorded in Scripture, did not change the world outside that locked room. It created the church to serve and help transform the world outside the locked room. Out of our deep prayer, our liturgical and sacramental life, the church must, absolutely must, serve the world challenge the world, and overcome the sin and selfish greed that infects the world as a means of further breathing the peace and wholeness that was the original intent of the Creator and sealed for all of humanity in the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That April day in Corleone was a Pentecost event in which the common, everyday experience of a family was the vehicle by which the Holy Spirit moved my heart and informed my will to understand that what I firmly believed was the direction of my life for which I sacrificed so much else in my life, was misguided and not of God, or at least not totally on mark for what God had in store for my life. There have been many Pentecost events in the over 45 years that have followed, all of which I remember and for which I give thanks this day as they find their place in this great solemnity of the church. I pray this is true for you as well, that this feast of Pentecost, this feast of the ministry of the church, may include all those moments and times in your life in which God has created rich, unexpected, unexpected experiences of grace, transformation, and maybe healing in your life. I invite you to look for them in your own life, especially in the places where you are locked away in fear or in complacency. I invite you to embrace and not merely endure this moment in which we are all apart in the midst of this pandemic. And pray that the Holy Spirit breathe upon you, your family and your loved ones, the people all around you, to renew the face of the earth and to recognize the face of God and the will of God in all things common and holy. Amen. Thank you, Fisher Provenzano, for sharing your own personal Pentecost experience some 45 years ago. 
Thank you for yielding to the Spirit of God. Look where the Spirit brought you thus far. To this dominion set in the sea, the Diocese of Long Island, to provide the kind of leadership that we need in times like these. Bishop, we want to thank you. If you had allowed the churches to remain open one more week, our story could have been quite a different one. So thank you for allowing the Spirit to continue to lead and guide you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Beloved, on this day, it is our custom to renew our baptismal covenant. To remember the promises that were made, to remember the gift of the Holy Spirit that was given to us in our baptism. And so I invite you today to renew your baptismal covenant with me. Dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins. Keep us in eternal life by His grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join me now as we say this prayer. 
for our parish in transition, a prayer composed by the wardens and vestry of this church. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, throughout the ages you have called your servants to minister in your vineyard. We thank you for Joshua, who has led us over three decades into our promised land. In this transitional period, bind us together as one. Deliver us when tempted to be scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Order our steps in your word. Be a lamp to our feet. Deepen our prayers. Give us a discerning spirit. Take away all our fears and doubts. Increase our faith. Open our eyes that we may identify the one you have chosen to be our new leader who will enable us to proclaim good news to the poor, the blind, the captive, and the oppressed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praise together, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God of healing and hope. In Jesus, you meet us in our places of pain and fear. Look with mercy on those who have contracted the coronavirus. And any who are vulnerable, and on all who feel in danger, through this time of global concern, by your Holy Spirit, bring out the best in us. Make us more aware of our interdependence on each other, and of the strength that comes from being one body in you. Through Christ, our wounded healer. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And today, beloved, I'd like to invite our wardens to come now and bring us greetings. Brother Herman, Brother Rex, are you here? I believe they are. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Good morning and greetings to Canon Anthony, Deacon Nelson, and our guest preacher today, the Right Reverend Lawrence Provenzano. Greetings, my brother. Greetings also to the St. David's family, as well as friends and well wishers. I would like to thank uh, Bishop Provenzano for his message today as we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. Also, thank God we have survived another week, and to God be the glory. For those of us who have access to the bulletin, there are a number of announcements in it for you to follow. However, I would like to highlight a couple of them. Sunday school resumes today, 11.30 a.m. for the kindergarten kids to sixth grade, and at 12 noon for the seventh to 12th graders. Also, on uh, June the 21st, we'll be having some special Father's Day celebrations. Graduates Day will be celebrated on Sunday, June the 28th for students graduating from kindergarten, elementary, junior high, high school, and universities and colleges. Please submit names by June the 14th to Rakia Dixon or the church's email address which you could find in the bulletin or on the church's website. Please, in, please include the names of the graduates, where they're graduating from, and a phone number so you can be contacted. 
Also, as we continue to go through these trying times, just want to remind people on Sunday at 7 p.m., there's a call and chat line hosted by Lona Moody Jones, where members of the St. Davis family just get together and talk about their experiences during the uh, COVID pandemic. Just a reminder, our telephonic prayer group, every evening at 8 p.m., except on Saturdays, will have their, um, their prayer services. Please join them. It's a nice way to come out there and pray, especially at, at this time. Would like to continue to thank our St. Davis family members who continue to provide their financial support for the church as we continue to operate as a normal business. This is all for me this week. Have a safe, blessed, and productive week, and I'd like to turn it over to Brother Pullman. Greetings, St. David's family. Greetings, my brother. And a special greetings to Angela Cashwell and Christopher Netty Sr. for celebrating birthdays today and all other celebrating birthdays at this time. As you know, Angela read our first lesson in Spanish. As you know, today we celebrate the Pentecost and Nini spoke in French. We also would like to wish wedding anniversaries to Christopher and Megan Netty, who are celebrating 40 years of marriage and Carlton and Nicole Neely, who is celebrating 10 years both today. God has blessed us at St. David's with loving families and friends. And all I can say is to continue to be safe during this time. And if you have any questions or you have any information, please contact the church. As you know, the numbers is on in the bulletin. And have a wonderful week. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Herman. And I want to pause now to remember two families who are mourning all the way from Belize. And we do have friends who are watching us from Belize, the Stain family. They lost the patriarch, Mr. Edison Stain of Belize. We remember you today, family members. We also pray for the Michael family, another prominent family from Belize. He was my personal friend, Osman Clinton Michael. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and Rise in glory. Amen. And again, I want to say happy birthday to Angela Cashwell and offer a prayer for you if you're still with us. Yes, there you go. And all others who are celebrating birthdays at this time, you could get a blessing with her. Yes. Angela, God bless you. And thank you for reading that service for us in Spanish. I will bless you in Spanish. I know a little blessing. Bendito sea Dios, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo. Amen. May God hold you and keep you in the palm of his hands and grant you many more happy years in Thank his service. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. And now we want to pause with our friends Chris and Megan Netty. They are celebrating 40 years. Bless your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Christopher, the lady looks 40. Then you robbed the cradle, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother Christopher. I want you to look at her. I want you to look at Megan, Brother Christopher, hold her hand, and I will ask you to remember the promises you made. Uh, the answer is, I will. I will. <laughs> not yet, not yet. <laughs> we, 
Hold her hand first. <laughs> Christopher, mm -hmm. 40 years yeah. ago, you took Megan to be your beloved wife. Will you continue to love her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? I do, we've got self. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's it, brother Christopher. <laughs> Megan, look at my brother. Look at him. And remember the promise you made 40 years ago? Yeah. Megan, will you continue to love Christopher, to honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others? Be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. Well, then you could kiss the groom. Let us see. <laughs> May all give them a big hand, friends. May Almighty God wrap you in the arms of his love. Grant you many more happy years together as husband and wife. Keep you well. In Jesus' mighty name, we Amen. pray. Amen. Is Carlton and Nicole... Also here, I'd love to see you if you are here. I don't believe we saw them today, but they must be listening. So I want to, wherever you are, Carlton, I want you to do the same thing. Take hold of Nicole's hand and thank God for the 10 years of marital bliss. May God continue to put his arms of love around you and grant you many more happy years together. Your family be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Proclaiming good news to the poor, the blind, the captive, and the oppressed. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. On the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of his mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine. Till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Jordan rivers, chilly and cold, 
it chills the body, but not the soul. There ain't but one train up on this track. It runs to heaven and right back. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit.